Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome to the very first episode of Airy Season. Okay, so just to kick start of this episode, I just want to say happy birthday to all of you solar Aries out there. It is your season, it's time to shine, right? So yeah, um, in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the archetype of Aries and then we're also going to be explaining your Aries house within your little birth chart followed by your Mars sign and then we're going to finish off with looking at the rising sla sign slash the first house. It would be good to know what you've got going on within your own little birth chart. So do you have any planets in Aries? Do you not have any planets in Aries? Do you have interceptions? Do you, what's going on in your first house even? Um, what's your Mars sign? Let us know. Now with that in mind, I just want to mention that I have created my very first book. Yes, so this is a physical copy that I wanted to print, but you can pick up a download, so a digital copy today if you like. I'm going to provide the link to the download in the description box. So it is a practical how-to guide made for all zodiac signs in relation to every season. It gives real life examples, it goes into the different Mars signs, the different Mars houses, it goes into um, the interceptions, it goes into retrogrades. If you want a simple guide to Aries, Mars in the first house, then pick up this beautiful book today, which by the way, shout out to Catherine Brown for creating the front cover. So with all of those introductions out of the way guys, let's do this. information all about archetypes then please be sure to check out the video that I made explaining what archetypes are but in a nutshell an archetype is a primitive mental image derived from the collective unconscious and so when it comes to the sign of Aries the mental image associated with this sign with this archetype it is of a ram's head and more specifically it is of a pair of horns and it's these horns that are a representation of both aggression and action it's these things that they represent and it's also the archetype of Aries that symbolizes an individual's quest for individualization. This has to be one of the key things when it comes to Aries overall. Now, before we go further into the archetype of Aries, let's actually just look at the archetype of Pisces so we can see where we're coming from because we wanna get thinking about these archetypes, these signs, more in terms of their evolution. So when it comes to Pisces, the 12th house and Neptune, they are all connected. They're a representation of the collective unconscious itself. So essentially meaning that, well, Pisces is a representation of everything. It's a representation of infinity. It's a representation of consciousness because everything is consciousness. It's also a representation of vibration because everything is vibration. Basically, it's Pisces that sort of represents this cosmic mind. <laughs> it's the cosmic mind and it, it basically, this cosmic mind, everything exists within the cosmic mind. So there's just an infinite amount of possibilities and potentialities. Now David Icke, he referred to the infinite possibilities as cosmic Wi-Fi or internet. He also goes on to state that we interact with this cosmic Wi-Fi or internet on an electrical level, waveform level and an electromagnetic level. And so what we do is we manifest this world that we think is real the same way that a computer manifests the world of the internet. So try to imagine then the archetype of Pisces or the 12th house, house within astrology, try to imagine it as if it was this cosmic Wi-Fi. And so what we do is we pull different pieces of information from it. It shows us the wave form 
it shows us the current of energy, which is quite fitting seeing as Pisces is a water sign. So there's good references there in terms of waves and currents. Another water reference to this though is actually to the sign of Cancer, because what the 12th house also represents or shows us is us in our mother's womb. Yes, so try to imagine the 12th house as the womb and then the first house is you crossing that crossing that threshold and out into the world as you are born. So the Cancerian reference there being that well Cancer is connected with the mother, it's a representation of it. So in a way it could be suggested that Cancer represents the cosmic mother, this being in the womb and growing and developing within water. But it's the archetype of Aries that represents the particle form. Even words are waveform. The same process. As I'm speaking now, my vocal cords are creating waveform vibrational fields of information. Only when the hearer decodes that information um, from the waveform to the language that we perceive that I'm speaking now, only then do we hear the words. It's not words that pass between us. It's information fields that become words when they are decoded into language. When it comes to waveform and particle form, try to imagine it as if, well, the waveform is, it's a wave, right? It's going like this, but the particle form would just be just little dots. So humans, like me, you, person next to you down the street, they're all we're all different like particles. But then we're all existing within that wave, right? We're all vibrating, we're all moving. <laughs> and furthermore, it's the archetype of Aries that rules the head. And if you think of birth, well, babies have to be born from the head out. They can't be born from the feet. And Pisces rules the feet, okay? There's another reference. But more specifically, when it comes to Aries, well, Aries represents that fairy energy, that cardinal fire of coming out of the womb, you know, that energy that's needed in order to push a baby out. That's a lot of energy. Similar thing when it comes to plants and uh, growing from the soil. So the push that the seed that force to come up through that soil, that's a lot of energy. And this right here is Aries. So with all of that being explained, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play some movie clips that I personally associate with the archetype of Aries. up for yourself, conquering, defending, fighting. Aries is a sign of being the warrior. It's a sign of achievement. It's a sign of drive and passion and motivation. Therefore guys, when it comes to the Aries house within your own natal birth chart, well the Aries house will show you where you get fired up, where you are ready for action, where you attack life, where you face challenges head on with courage. It's where you take risks. It's where you show initiative. It's where you feel motivated. 
and just ready to go. I mean, this is Cardinal Fire and Cardinal Fire is just so fired up. It gets so energized, it gets so passionate. So wherever Aries lies within your chart, this is gonna show you where you assert so much of your energy. And it's also gonna show you where you assert your leadership because keeping in mind that Aries is the leader of the zodiac because it is the very first sign. So yeah, the house that Aries rules within your natal birth chart, it is going to show you where you're going to be a leader and where you want to win, where you want to reach your full potential. But above all else, it is your Aries house that's going to show you where you seek individualization as you take action on becoming independent. Let's take Miley Cyrus for example here. Now Miley Cyrus, she has the sign of Aries ruling her 12th house and she does not have any planets within the sign of Aries. And the thing about her, of course, is that she had this kind of self-identity crisis because she was Hannah Montana once upon a time. This whole breaking out um, and taking action was really about her taking action on developing her own individuality. So rather than it being based on what others projected onto her, it was about her getting to know herself and developing herself. Another example is Keanu Reeves. Now Keanu Reeves, he has Aries ruling his eighth house and he doesn't have any planets in Aries either. And what I really find interesting about Keanu Reeves is the movies that he selects or that he plays a role in. So he does a lot of psychological type of stuff and you can just notice how he's not afraid to explore the darker sides of life, those darker, more taboo subjects. But what if you have planets within the sign of Aries? Well, it really, first of all, depends on whichever planet that is. But from that planet going into the sign of Aries, what it's going to do is that Aries energy is going to get that planet fired up. It's going to get it moving. It wants to drive it forward. That Aries influence on that planet, it will encourage you to direct um, that energy, so whatever energy it is, so whatever planet it is, to be direct with that planet, to be honest with that planet. Let's say you have Mercury within the sign of Aries, then you're going to be so direct, you're going to be so straight and honest in how you communicate. So you're going to tell other people straight to their face something that you think. So whatever it is that you think about a certain situation in your life, or on the television, or something that you heard, you're just going to say it. You're just going to be open about it. Let's say, for example, you have Venus within the sign of Aries. Well, then you're going to be very courageous in how you act towards love and relationships and attraction where you're able to pursue a partner head on. Now, if you happen to have a stellium in the sign of Aries, so that would be four or more planets within the sign of Aries. Yes, it depends on which planets are in there. But because of so much energy being derived into that Aries energy, this might make you the ultimate warrior. It might make you the ultimate go-getter. Now, this could also result in you being quite reckless, quite selfish, impulsive, not thinking things through, burning your bridges, difficulty being able to ground yourself. It could just result in this all-consuming do, do, go, go attitude. Now, if you do have an Aristillium, it's really good to look at what's going on in the opposite sign or the opposite house. So the opposite sign would be Libra. And what Libra is encouraging an Aristillium person to do is learning to really think things through, to be more objective about things rather than super personal about things. And also learning how to take other people's opinions and what they want into consideration as well. Though still, what if you don't have any planets, so zero planets within the sign of Aries? Does that mean you're not very driven? Does that mean you're not very ambitious? Well, not exactly. The reason for why this is, is because the Aries house is still gonna show you where your energy, where that Aries archetype energy is playing out within your natal birth chart. Yes, other planets can counteract certain things going on, but, it's still there. <laughs> the energy's still there. 
And if Aries is intercepted within your natal birth chart, well then that suggests that there are blockages when it comes to your assertion and when it comes to action. For an example here of integrating this assertion and integrating this action, um, a good example could be learning to set goals and learning to set different challenges for yourself and also doing something that makes you feel energized. By doing these things, by acting on these things, you will definitely be activating that Aries energy. So guys, when it comes to the Aries house, the Aries house can certainly show you where you achieve, where you stand up for what you want, where you want to be number one, and be a winner. And it's also where you assume that what you know is correct. Let's say for example you have the sign of Aries ruling your fourth house. You might want to conquer and win when it comes to your family members and your home. Or let's say you have Aries ruling your 10th house, you might want to stand up for what you want within a career. And lastly, let's say you have Aries ruling your 6th house, you might assume that you are correct when it comes to your daily routines and habits and your health. It is the Aries house where we find that we put our own needs and our own wants first. But it's also where we show others that they have the courage and the ability within them to do the same. So essentially it's about encouraging others to get up after a possible challenge that they've faced and also encouraging them to act on something that they really want. Now of course difficulties can arise because we can't expect others to act the same way that we do. So it's within the Aries house that we can kind of be like this. We can sort of assume that others are going to get it, that they're going to act the way we do because of how we act. But it's about understanding that individuals are free to create their own successes and their own failures. But it's also the sign of Aries that shows us that we have the courage and we have the bravery to get up after a certain experience where we have maybe failed. Ultimately guys, it is the archetype of Aries that shows us that we can get up with bravery and courage after facing such experiences. We can face life's challenges head on, we can stand up for what is right, we can focus on our desires without fearing or worrying about the backlash from others and it's also showing us how we can nip things in the bud sooner rather than later. Now when it comes to the planet Mars, so the ruling planet of Aries within astrology, it's the planet Mars that will show you how you assert your leadership depending on the certain sign that Mars is in. Therefore, it is the Mars sign that will show you the style by which you are direct, by which you assert your drive. So how you drive forward, how you keep moving forward. The Mars sign is also going to show you how you achieve your goals, more specifically short term, term goals. So the likes of your daily goals, your weekly goals, your monthly goals. So if you have your Mars in Cancer, for example, you might achieve your goals in a very caring and emotional way. If you have your Mars in the sign of Leo, you might achieve your goals in a creative, expressive way. If you have your Mars in the sign of Libra, you might achieve your goals with the help of a friend or with the help of a spouse. Or if you have your Mars within the sign of Capricorn, you might achieve your goals in a very structured or disciplined way. So if we were to add in the houses here with the Mars signs, if you have Mars and Cancer in the second house, well then you're going to achieve your financial goals, okay? So finances being connected with the second house. You're gonna achieve these goals in a caring and emotional way where you drive forward as you want to achieve financial security. And this may specifically be to support your family. Or it could be that you become emotionally invested in a very quick purchase to sort of help you with how you're feeling in that moment. You just might get this quick hit from your emotions just to want to buy something. And that very thing that you buy, that item, can provide you with a lot of emotional support. Let's say you have Mars within the sign of Leo in the sixth house. Well then, you're going to achieve your day-to-day -day goals. So the day-to-day -day routines being connected with the sixth house. You might achieve them in a very creative way. Or you might achieve them in a rather flamboyant way. 
or it could be a matter of you feeling inspired by fitness and where you make time, you deliberately make time for self-love throughout your day, where you just pencil that in for yourself, you know? And when it comes to that to-do list, that to-do list just might be so just colorful and just really nice and creative, but then that to-do list in itself, that to-do list you wanna get complete. You wanna go through all of those things and you're just gonna look like a complete diva whilst doing it. Now Mars can also show you how you act sexually, so how you pursue someone. So for example, if you have Mars within the sign of Aquarius, you might pursue someone with the knowledge that you know and you might try to pursue them by asking them really deep questions. <laughs> or if you have your Mars in the sign of Libra, well, you're gonna be the type of person who throws little hints towards that person you're trying to pursue, but those hints might go unnoticed due to your lack of being direct. Mars also can show you how you argue, how you fight, um, so how you attack and defend yourself. So let's say, for example, you have Mars within the sign of Taurus, you might defend yourself by refusing to budge or admitting when you're wrong within an argument. Or if you have your Mars within the sign of Pisces, well, you might be very passive to begin with, but then because of that pass passivity, it kind of just all bottles up, bottles up, bottles up, and then poof, like you just explode. And then people look at you, look at you like you're completely irrational. <sighs> Lastly then, we're gonna be looking at the rising sign slash the first house within your natal birth chart. So the thing about the first house is that it kicks everything off. So because of this, in a way, the rising sign and the first house can indicate how it is that we wake up each morning. So how it is that we rise each morning, right? So the rising sign is to do with the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon during the time of your birth. So if you can imagine it like that, in terms of you waking up from your sleeping state being the 12th house to your waking state being the first house. So the style and flavor by which you may wake up each morning can maybe show, be shown through the rising sign. For example, if you have a Taurus rising, the alarm clock might go and you just might hit snooze so many times. If you have a Libra rising, as soon as you wake up, you might be thinking about the outfit that you wanna wear that day. If you have a Gemini rising, you might wake up and already your mind is just racing so much. Or if you have a Virgo rising, you might wake up and your mind is just critiquing every single little detail that you said last night or you did last night. The rising sign or the first house can also show you how you arrive on the scene, so how you enter into new experiences and events in your life. For example, if you have a Sagittarius rising, you might arrive on the scene with such optimism, you like to really see the opportunities within that particular new experience or place that you're entering into. If you have an Aquarius rising, you might be rather objective as you enter into new experiences where you're really chill, you're really cool about it, you're kind of like a wallflower. But then if you have a Cancer rising, you might be the type of person who really likes to feel out the environment on your surroundings. Meaning guys, that the first house and the rising sign, they will show you how you move throughout the world, how you embark on this journey, on this quest, West towards self-discovery where you grow and you learn through new experiences and so therefore you you sort of bring your rising sign you bring your first house along with you on this journey it's ultimately the first house that represents how you are led towards discovering more of who you are so let's say for example you have a Taurus rising but you have Mars and Taurus in the first house the way that you're led towards discovering more of who you are, well, for one, due to this being fixed energy, this is, and also because Taurus is to do with comfort and security as well, this is about you having the courage to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Now, you might be the type of person who is able to do that, but it's just that 
maybe you only really do it when you see the rewards that you can get from it. So the actions that you make towards new things within your life or new experiences, you might look at it as, well, what is this going to bring me? How is this going to benefit me? Let's say, for example, you have a Capricorn rising with Mercury in the first house. Well, right off the bat, yes, you're going to want to communicate with others. You're going to be very interested in communication and interacting with other people, but it's just that this is Capricorn energy, so you're going to be a lot more cautious about it. You're going to think, 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 think things through a lot more. You're going to be more long-term minded in terms of the new experiences that you're a part of. So it's like, well, do I want to go into this new experience? Because, well, does it fit into my long-term plan or will it really benefit me? What's the purpose? Then again, you might be the type of person who places so much high expectations on how it is that you do communicate with others as you move throughout the world that you might potentially block yourself off from wanting to take part in new experiences due to potential fears and blockages that you have when it comes to your own mentality. Another thing that I would like to mention is the mask. So the rising sign is often referred to as a mask within astrology and I have expressed my opinions about this before, but the mask ultimately I'm seeing it as a survival tool. So it's the basic identity or title or role that you play within this physical reality um, in which you can have your needs and your wants met because ultimately Aries is a sign of survival. Though it's not to get confused with the mask being deceptive because that's something that I sort of saw it as before. It's not the real you but it does explain your self identity of you within physical form, okay? So we're talking about particle form, waveform. It's the rising sign that will show you that general personality, but it just won't show you your deepest soul. So the deeper, deeper parts of you. The rising sign will show you the types of titles and labels and names that you get referred to. So, I mean, you got someone who's called Jessica, Simon, Tom. These are all certain, you know, references to the rising sign in terms of titles. Uh, the rising sign in the first house will also, also show you how you sort things out, how you categorize things, how you label things, your sort of perceptions of yourself that are being all sorted out. Um, but not only the perceptions of yourself, but the perceptions of other people. So. The opposite house of the first house is the seventh house, the house of the other. But it's through this rising sign, this first house energy, that we perceive the world around us. But as we are doing so, we're also perceiving others. And so we're reflecting on what others show us about us through them. So what you do is you develop your own personal identity based upon the titles and the labels that were assigned to you, further resulting in your own personal style further developing upon your perceptions of yourself and of others. Basically guys, it is the rising sign slash the first house that represents the lens, the window by which we see the world through. And so what we do is we relate to the information that we take in from the outside world. Another thing about the rising sign more specifically, okay, is that the rising sign will show you your chart ruler. So the planet that rules your rising sign is your chart ruler. For example, if you have a Leo rising, your chart ruler will be the sun. If you have a Virgo rising, your chart ruler will be Mercury. If you have a Scorpio rising, your chart ruler will be Pluto. But then what you do is you go to look to see where that chart ruler is located within the birth chart in order to really see where there's great significance, where there's great importance within your own personal story. And lastly guys, the rising sign will also signify the journey that you take in order towards becoming your sun sign, towards self actualization. Let's say for example you have a Gemini sun and you've got a Taurus rising. So you're going to be led towards self-discover self-discovery in a very gradual, uh, patient way, but you're moving towards this Gemini sun where your purpose, so the sun is connected with purpose, your purpose is about communicating. So the way 
in which you discover this is through that Taurus rising energy where you do it slowly, you do it gradually, you build on it. And someone with these very placements is actually Lana Del Rey and she is a successful singer and songwriter. Another example could be you having a Virgo rising with a Leo sun. So the way that you're led towards that self-actualization of the Leo sun, where your purpose is to express and create, that might be done in a very, a very particular way, very organized way, where you sort out all of those little smaller details and you get everything in order in order to get to that point. Now, a great example of this would be Roger Federer. He has these placements and he, of course, is a professional tennis player. With him, he obviously had to put in the time in order to become really, really good at that craft. Overall, guys, it is the sign of Aries that represents both action and aggression. And so it manifests into whichever house or area of life that Aries rules within your natal birth chart. Your Mars sign then will show you how and where that energy is being manifested most predominantly. And lastly, the rising sign slash first house within your natal birth chart that will show you how you are led towards self-discovery as you embark on the hero's journey throughout the rest of your natal birth chart. Okay guys so that concludes my video on Aries season or the archetype of Aries. Now if you do have any information or insights that you would like to talk about when it comes to the archetype of Aries then definitely be sure to let us know in the comment section and also let us know what you thought of the video. Did you find it helpful? Did you find it useful? Do you feel that you're able to understand this archetype a lot better? And with all that being said guys, thank you so much for watching, thank you for subscribing and if you would like to see more videos from myself then go right ahead and click that subscribe button and I will be back with another video very very soon. Bye!